Cranky Yankee coming back with another video here to give you an update on F1 breaking news. Now, this is one of those videos where I don't often revel in the fact that I get to return to a story in which I made a call and it was correct because oftentimes we're not in the cockpit, we're not in the garage. But we're talking the Miami Grand Prix today. It's something I kind of covered about three, oh, I definitely covered three weeks ago. I uh, put in a, a, little, a bit of a longer blog, but a shorter breaking news video. And this video is basically to update it because there was an important vote, which I, I cited before. And that was the, the, the open public board, uh, like the city commission meeting. And uh, Bratch, you know, uh, a lot of people were there representing F1. There were a lot of people in the community there. And the, the short story is this hit some major, major roadblocks, was pushed back till December 1st. Now, this was something that we precisely talked about and said would happen. How many news articles did you read where people were saying, this is done deal, this is done deal? I really do think, and I did get some flack for this, I really do think that this was one of the only ones that said this probably isn't going to happen. And it's because, as an American, I, and if you're an American out there, or if you follow American politics even, it's not to be, it's the opposite of condescending. It's not a good place when, it's not a good place to be in terms of the political landscape when you can see the story and go, no way that happens. Like, based on the opposition and who it is and what they're claiming, no way this is going to happen. That's just how American politics works, right, especially right now. Um, so you don't have to be an avid follower to know that it's a difficult time right now uh, in, in the states for in the political climate. Now, I'll go through, like, kind of what happened, what was said. The end result is December 10th is we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait until December 10th when they are at, so let's look specifically, the board they're going to be at. The Infrastructure and Capital Improvements Committee. You can already tell. It just sounds like, it just sounds like a sinkhole of time. The, improve, the Infrastructure and Capital Improvements Committee. That's who they've got to lobby on December 10th. So the fact that this public hearing, which everyone thought was going to go per, Of course it's not going to go perfect. But they've, they were successful in pushing it to December 10th. If they don't get it done at December 10th, no dice on 2021. No way. I went from 50% chance to this happening to now 25. But they could pull a miracle out. I mean, it depends on who makes up this committee and who's going to be speaking at it. Um, you had Fittipaldi there. You had Sean, Bratch Sean Bratches there. Uh, and actually, the, the Miami-Dade uh, mayor is actually in favor. So I put who is actually in favor up on the screen and in the blog itself. So check out the blog if you want. Um, but... The here is the arguments from uh, Betty Ferguson. So again, if you're not into that, uh, you know, just want to. I, I don't know. I think it's interesting. But here's the argument from the actual former county commissioner. And uh, before I get into that, if you like this stuff, if you're interested in a wide range of you know, F1 videos, it's not just the typical stuff. I try to switch it up and watch how you guys like it and, and react. And I try to morph this stuff. And if you don't give me feedback, I'm just going to kind of keep going with it. But otherwise, yeah, I'll just um, I'll go with what you guys want, make your request, but subscribe, tell people about this channel. It's the only way we can overcome the YouTube um, algorithm barrier, which absolutely suppresses smaller, con smaller uh, content videos, smaller channels that are growing because they prefer big, giant channels. Of course they do because it's a little bit more conservative. They're a little bit more down the middle. They don't really have, you know, s sort of a jarring or any sort of rock the boat mentality that would talk about something that's contrarian to their narrative. So that's a fact. I can see it in the data, but let's move on. Betty Ferguson says, it's a Formula One racing, it's Formula One racing in a bedroom community. The majority of residents in Miami Gardens do not want to see F1 racing at Hard Rock Stadium. The Miami Gardens City Council voted to oppose Formula One. So now this um, this, like I said, this is the former county commissioner and how that works is um, these, these smaller counties have people in charge and they basically, um, they basically cover their little, like their area, their constituents. And this specific area is full of constituents who have, like, like I said in the, in the last video, you have to really be like, an, like a fan of uh, American football to really understand the problems here. Like the Dolphins had so, like had years of trouble with this uh, county specifically, but with the city and the residents themselves, just because it's, like I said, the, the, the socioeconomic um, gaps in this city are so vast that the argument that they're going to make is the people who want F1 aren't the people who are going to go to F1, which isn't a wild idea, but you think about all the other cities that F1's in, and that's not really the, you know, that's not really a problem, so to speak. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it is, right? Don't, I'm, I'm sure it is, but 
in Miami, it's specifically a problem. So some kid called me an idiot on the last video, and it's it's for this reason. And I knew this was going to happen. And uh, she has a strong case that's going to be hard to argue, like I said, in this political environment. So she goes on it. And we have seen too often deep pockets paint rosy pictures and have their way only to the embarrassment of the of the county at a later date don't follow f1 promoters to come in and roll us over like we're not even humans so again that line right there is going to be is definitely the one that at least was partly successful in pushing this vote back but uh she goes on they can produce all kinds of phony statements about how they they can mitigate the deadly effects but we can never erase deadly health damage and possibly permanent hearing loss especially to children even the county's own study verifies the deadly effects. So she says the word deadly effects a few times. And um, what she's trying to do is appeal to the environmental, the environmental issues, but also at the same time, uh, she's trying to appeal to the human um, issues that would uh, arise from having a Formula One event. I, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. I'm just reporting what she said. And that's but that alone, that that argument right there is so hard to argue with unless you have objective facts it's going to be difficult to say we don't care about those things. And that's, this may be all politics, but this is really, this is very much American politics right here. This is American politicking at its best, just tough rhetoric that now you've, you know, it's it's kind of like, I don't want to say a straw man argument, but now you're arguing against kids' health. It's not about Formula One anymore. And so I think that was the goal, to get it out of this and push to another hearing, which it may be even more difficult. I don't know enough about this infrastructure and capital movements, improvements, uh, infrastructure and capital improvements committee but i can tell you this hearing uh, miami is not on the books if i had if i was a bed if i was a betting man and i'll just go ahead and put my money where my mouth is i don't think this happens in 2021 i think the fact that there's a precedent now set now you have to disagree with this committee's vote and then you've got to go and you've got to disagree with these public claims and say no it does help kids hearing loss and now this is officially on the record or something you need to uh, basically solve and that's a tough problem that I think Bratch is, is I mean that's a tough problem that they're going to be in everyone from F1 to make that argument and yeah just with such a push with things like the Green New Deal and everything happened like I said in American politics not that this is an American politic video but um, with all the things being pushed in the states F1 is definitely counter to the narrative um, now it doesn't erase the carbon footprint uh, you know having formula E or something like that it's actually a massive tremendous carbon footprint but the concept of engines and to, to someone who's not super deep, like I doubt Betty Ferguson watches F1. So it's not, it's not, you know, it's something that a lot of people, a lot of F1 fans, you know, it's not like if you're an F1 fan, you hate the environment. That's not it at all. But that's to someone on the outside. That's what it sounds like. And in the States environment, if you're, if you're just wondering why would this even be a thing, it's a problem in the States because that this is the narrative right now. It's a major, major narrative. And I'm not saying it's false or, bogus or anything like that i'm just saying that's the narrative and just to keep you guys updated everything that's happened in europe that's why i read all all your guys's comments that's why i listen to all the experts I, opinions over there over here i'm not an expert i'm just saying i am embedded in what's going on and that's why this is, is not probably not going to happen and that's why this vote got pushed back to december 10th and there were people obviously that were on the side of f1 so let's see, this is actually Marcus Armas, who I put this in the blog. He's quoted as saying, we are zoned, to, we are zoned for motor vehicle racing because of a couple of years ago we resolved a lawsuit with the county commission and the city council. There were public hearings and public votes in the resolution of these three years of discussion. So his, his claim was that um, this had already gone to a vote prior to his commission, and it was 13 to nothing in favor. So this already has precedent of being good. And the other thing that kind of helped F1 is he's saying, look, we, we're good to go. He's trying to make everyone clear, you know, all the residents. This is number one is a, quote, financial juggernaut. It's something he, I, I watched the video he was saying. And also he's saying, look, this, this won't get caught up in red tape. We're good to go. And we have everything ready. They have all the zones, which I didn't even know that. They had all the zones taken care of, all the legal, um, all the legal justifications to be able to build something like this. And uh, so they have a strong argument. You've got um, you've got actually Emerson there talking about it. So I mean, a two-time world champion, a Formula One. I guess maybe to residents who don't watch Formula One, that's probably not impressive. But if Emerson was talking to me, I'd listen. Um, and Sean was obviously there, uh, and then like I said, Carlos uh, Jimenez was it was lobbying for F1. So 
it's got to go to another vote. Um, this this vote was actually probably went more towards the residents and the um, the, the counter side of having the Formula One Grand Prix here. So b- big, big, this is a big, big hiccup in the plans. And I personally, based on how this went, I don't see it happening. But you know, I kind of saw this coming. Don't be surprised when you see this video come up. But it's not, it's it's not revelatory in the fact that if you watch this channel, you didn't probably see this coming. And if you're an American fan, this is a bummer. But it's gonna be real hard to get a F1 race in here because, like I said, it's the gap in socio the socioeconomic gap gap is too big. In Austin, it's not the same thing, um, but in Miami, it is, and that's why Miami never made sense to me. It still doesn't, and that's why this is the exact reason it doesn't make sense to me. So that's it for the video. I'm gonna keep it right there, and uh, I'll be uploading some more videos soon. If you guys want content, let me know what it is. I love making content. You guys request. I'm probably gonna do the 19 the 2005 U.S. Grand Prix debacle and put it on the F1 Wars podcast, which finally is approved in Apple Podcasts. God, if everything I do always gets fought, but that's approved. I just threw the other two episodes in. I didn't tweak them too much. I just put the audio in, so I can probably clean them up in the future, but F1 Wars Podcast on Apple. Sorry, guys, if you're not an Apple user, but I'll put the lips in download, by the way. So I'll, I'll go ahead and still put the download because they are up, and you don't need Apple to download it, but it's not in like Google Play or anything yet. But Let's just see how it goes, but if you guys want the 2005 Grand Prix and you watch this far, let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for checking this out, and uh, yeah, it's Wednesday. Let's keep on track with Race Week.